Hello everyone, and welcome to our problem solving for March 31st. Um, the assigned reading was essentially the uh, rest of the gases module. Uh, we'll have the thermal chemistry module up and available for you, so you can start reading that on April 1st. Um, so again, two problems to work on today, uh, all dealing with the idea of standard temperature and pressure and how we can use the idea of connecting volumes to a certain amount of gas at a specific set of conditions to solve problems uh, in stoichiometry. So here are our first problem. How many grams of sodium liquid are produced per liter of uh, nitrogen gas at STP? On slide 29, we would have seen standard temperature and pressure, 273.15 Kelvin and one bar of pressure. One mole of gas occupies a volume of 22.711 liters. And I've also got written on this slide here the molar mass of sodium, 22.99 grams per mole, because that's going to be important for solving this particular problem. So if the question is saying are produced per liter of N2, then really since we know that stoichiometry and chemistry has to be done in moles, we're going to have to take that idea that if one mole occupies a volume of 22.711 liters at STP, well one liter has how many moles in it? So that's our first step for this particular problem. So if it's um, how am I going to do this? Uh, so if I do want it for one liter, um, 22, oh, that's gotten itself a little smaller. Let's just fix that. We see 22.711 liters per mole, um, effectively, or another way, and probably an easier way to understand this, 22.711 liters per one mole is how we could write that volume at STP for the nitrogen gas. Well, we want that to be equivalent to one liter for X moles. So essentially, we see that we're going to do some cross multiplication here to get this to work. And what we're going to find is that, of course, X moles over one mole equals one liter divided by 22.711 liters. Of course, the liters will cancel out in this particular case. And so really what we're going to find out is we're going to have 1 divided by 22.711 moles in this particular case. Uh, I do need a calculator for this no. to work, um, which I do not have open just yet. So let's just see what we can get on the go. So yeah, if I take 1 divided by uh, 22.711, what we see is that we have 0 0.0440 moles. Of N2 is really representing that one liter. From our balanced equation, we see that if I want to connect this to the number of moles of sodium, I'm going to use the balanced equation to figure this out. So moles of sodium equals the moles of N2, but we have to account for the stoichiometric ratio that we have in the problem, and we see it's three moles of N2 is used or is accompanied by two moles of sodium. So in other words, the number of moles of sodium is going to be two-thirds the number of moles of nitrogen in this particular case, so that's going to be two-thirds of 0 0.440 moles, leading us to, where's that calculator again? Uh, so times 2 divided by 3, 0.0293, let's say sub 5, oops, 0 0.029, oh, already forgotten that, so, uh, 3 sub 5, And of course, if we want to get the uh, mass of sodium out of that, that's going to be moles times the molar mass. It's going to be that 0 0.2935 moles multiplied by the molar mass of 22.99 grams. Oops. Oops. 
and so it appears we're going to make 0 0.675 grams. That's going to be the answer for this question. Six seven five. Yes. So that's the first problem. Again, using the idea of a fixed volume connected to a fixed amount, uh, and since we're solving problems in terms of amounts, and that's how we're going to make that connection in that particular case. Our second problem on there, if we have all gases measured at the same temperature and pressure, let's say standard temperature and pressure, what volume of ammonia gas is produced when 225 liters of H2 are consumed in the reaction? First thing is we've got a uh, an equation here is not a balanced equation, so of course we have to spend a moment to balance that. I see two nitrogens on the reactant side, but only one nitrogen in an ammonia molecule, so that appears to mean that we need two for our ammonia there. Uh, once we put that two in front of there, each ammonia molecule has three hydrogens. That means we're going to have six hydrogens in total, which means we're going to need a three here, and now we have a balanced equation. Now, in this particular case, we're actually kind of using the idea that since a volume of gas can be associated with an amount of gas, as long as we're keeping the temperature and pressure the same, that means that we don't actually need to calculate the number of moles in this particular case. Look, I could calculate the number of moles of H2 that are consumed. It's going to be approximately um, 10. Uh, because, of course, we've seen at STP that one mole would occupy a volume of 22.711 liters. Here we've got 225 liters. That's 10 times bigger than 22.71, give or take. That means I should have about 10 moles there. But instead of having to go through moles, I can take the idea that, of course, if I've got 10 moles, I can use the stoichiometric ratio and still get the same idea. So I can actually solve this problem literally in terms of volume. So the volume of NH3 produced is going to equal the volume of H2 consumed multiplied by the stoichiometric ratio connecting those two, which again is going to be 2 NH3 for every 3 H2. So again, we're going to see it's two-thirds of that 225 liters, and that is going to equal... 150 liters. And so let's just think about it from the other way. If that volume of 225 liters represents at STP uh, just slightly less than 10 moles, then what we would have is the reaction is going to say that out of that 10 moles of H2, we're going to be able to create two thirds of 10 moles, which is about 6.66 moles of. Uh, ammonia, and then those 6.66 moles each occupy 22.7 liters, each mole of that, and so of course we take our 22.711 liters, multiply by 6.66, and we're going to get that same 150 liters. A couple of different ways of approaching it, but again the idea is that you should be able to use volumes in certain circumstances when dealing with reactions with gases, all because the amount, the volume, changes directly proportionally to that amount. That's the problem solving for today. Be sure to check out the Mastering Chemistry assignment for today, probably working on these particular ideas, and we will see you next time.